Simon, this is such a treat. I'm, I'm so glad we're getting to chat today. Historically, I would talk to you or interview you for about eight minutes max. But we can just forget the rules today and just keep on talking, which is so nice. What a pleasure. Well, it's lovely to see you, Fern. I hope things ages. are all good. I, I know. I saw you. It's probably, it could be about three or four years. I mean, yeah. you're off doing your thing. We're still grafting away in the music world as it know, changes well, and evolves. As you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of yours and, and always have been. So it's just amazing to always follow your career. How, how have you found this very weird year? Obviously, there's no touring. There's no live music scene how have you found that I, th I think like most people I, I've, I've felt kind of unsettled at points a bit a bit down at other points and then and then feeling liberated sometimes you know I, I, we've kind of create we kind of create these little rituals and, and routines we have and we put our pressure on ourselves to kind of to maintain productivity and and actually what I've what I found the most positive is trying to get off that kind of treadmill of, of onto the next thing. And it took me a few months to kind of get here, you know. <laughs> I think oh. I've I've been describing it to my friends as because we've just put a record out, as you say, normally we go and tour and everything, but I feel like the final frame of the Thelma and Louise movie, where we're like just about to do something and it's just paused and you know, you've no idea what's happened next, but yeah. we're kind of mid-flight. But um, I feel very fortunate that my friends and family are well and I get food on the table and a roof over the head. So whenever I get too down about the, how unsettled everything and everyone is, I just remember that and, and I'm grateful. But, but yes, yeah, strange times. I mean, strange for you as well, you know? Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm recording these podcasts with a blanket over a cupboard to bounce the sound <laughs> off. I mean, it's like, what's going on? I'm interviewing people and I'm like, look at my shitty little blanket behind me on a wardrobe but we're all just having to adapt and I think we are finding new ways of being creative and that there is a bit of excitement there and I, I'm you know similarly to you trying to not be overly productive and know that it's all right just to stop and like have these moments to pause and I'm not habitually very good at that I do lean towards Can trying to do too much so so it has been a really interesting time luckily you guys already had recorded an album that you slightly delayed the release on, but it, it came out this year. Such, a, yeah. again, an incredible album. Um, a celebration of, of endings and sort of very spooky thematically. What you were <laughs> working with way before this pandemic hit, you were kind of dancing around some of the subjects or things that we're dealing with now, I guess. You know, the last few years, I think the world has become a lot more tumultuous than perhaps when you and I were kind of in our teenage years, you know, things seem, I was kind of worried about romance, about going out and getting, having a drink, you know, like, like my choices of career, little things like that, that, that nowadays are kind of, can't be taken for granted, anyone's choice of career or occupation. But I definitely was going through a, a period where I felt like I needed to be in control of them of how I react to things. That's basically where it came from. There was a couple of long-term working relationships we had that came to an end and, and it wasn't desirable for either party and, 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 and it kind of shook me to my foundations and the band to the foundations, but we found a way through it. And, and part of that was just not letting it become oppressive or not letting the negative side of it and the sadness of, of the deterioration of a, of a relationship actually affect moving forward. Because we're, we're kind of trained to think if something finishes or comes to an end that it's immediately a bad thing, you know, oh, that, you know, normally you think, oh, I wish that was still going on. And, and actually there's a, there's, there is a liberty to moving forward and having choices, having opportunities and, and kind of trying to savor those opportunities. Cause sometimes we, we train ourselves, as I said earlier, about being into one kind of lane and doing one thing. And it sometimes takes something tumultuous or, or like a trauma of some sort to shake you up. And it makes you realize what you truly cherish and what is actually important to you. So, so I kind of went through that a, a couple of years ago, um, you know, mentally and, 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 and kind of outwardly with relationships. And then this year, as we've been talking up the album, you know, the virus was peeking around the corner, you know, like everyone else, I wasn't aware of how, how dangerous it was going to be. I think there was a, there was a comfort in the distance initially where it's like, oh, that's the other side of the world. But as we all know, the world's a small, small place now, but it did feel a long way away. So, so I feel that what I've been contending with and everyone else has been contending with this summer and this year 
is kind of what I was trying to find my way through a couple of years ago. So yeah. it's given me a, a level of fortitude at the moment to kind of deal with the unknown, which which I think is is probably the most unsettling part to any human is is not having that level yeah. of control or you know knowing what's around the corner. We like to think we we can control our lives and control our destinies, but really, who knows where we're going to end up? You know. We are wildly out of control at every minute of the day. But if we really sit and think about that, we wouldn't leave the house. But of course, <laughs> you know, that's the truth for all of us. And it's, it's so interesting because, like you say, we all try and plan what's coming next, whether that be in our personal lives, working lives, whatever, you know, just planning to meet a friend, you know, at the weekend, or whatever. All those sorts of measures make us feel safe. And mm -hmm. I think this year, like you say, the most unsettling, unsettling thing is that being ripped from beneath us that there, there is no safety net because we're just all sort of free falling together and no one's really guiding us in any particular direction so it so it is scary and I think you know what you've tapped into thematically with the album and and the name of the album having the word endings in there you know endings even if it's you know even if it's a positive ending a positive change any sort of change is hard, you know, for humans, yeah. we're not good at it. We're not good at adapting. It takes practice and then we become more dynamic and, and resilient, et cetera, but, but not easy. And, and I think especially with, with relationships, and it's a subject I've been thinking about recently because we've all had that, you know, we've all had friendships end, working relationships expire. Um, and it, it, there is a level of trauma there because, you know, you, you question then sort of, trust and loyalty and, uh -huh. and all sorts of things and I think it's quite a rocky road to find peace with that sometimes. It, it, it can be you know I think because you question yourself you question like everything that's kind of perhaps happened throughout the relationship and you start to doubt things that you shouldn't doubt and 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 I don't think when people grow apart as well I don't think that's a terrible thing I think that's just the nature of being humans and we all evolve differently and but it is it can it can be really sad and you look you know you look inward you think could have done things differently and of course we all could do things differently but but you can't change what's happened and for whatever's brought you to this moment you've just got to try and make the most positive decision for yourself and your loved ones and and you know and, and at moments you do have to be a little bit selfish that's not to say that you you know you sacrifice anyone else's feelings i don't mean that but at points you have to say well look, is this making either of us happy is this going to get worse before before it gets better or or is it not going to get better and i think that with a bit of age i think you start to you're able to kind of put things in perspective and know maybe where you in some relationships you can work towards something better because you're pulling in the same direction and in other ones you realize as time's going on you're just getting further and further apart but i think that's the story of of life as our parents always told us growing up you know mm. things seem simpler when you're when you're younger Perhaps not for this generation who have no. an awful lot, who have an awful lot in their lap, but but you know like the, things that you do figure things out as you get older. I, I just turned forty last year, and I've just turned forty-one last week. It was oh, the worst fortieth fortieth year ever. <laughs> thank you. For sure. It was like a whole the whole year just went like that in a fit of, of like oh no. Oh, <laughs> God. But 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 I do feel a. Like, like, for want of a better phrase, an inner confidence growing. I, th I think you're more aware of your identity as you get older. You're more aware of what does bring you joy. Mm. That life really, life's a bit too short to really be, you know, struggling with things if you don't have to. You know, there's enough struggles in life without kind of, without persevering with something that yes. might not be worth it. Again, this is something that's been massively on my mind. I mean, I'm of a similar age. I'm 40 next year. And, um, and it's, it's been something, you know, there's been a lot of sort of life lessons going on. Um, and we spoke to Deepak Chopra on, on this podcast. And he, I mean, there were so many things. I literally was like scribbling things down afterwards. So I must remember to apply for my life. Yeah. But one of them being that sometimes, or well, most of the time, to find peace, always pick the path that requires less effort. And I was so surprised by this because I was like, oh, I meant to be fighting for things like fighting for relationships, fighting for what I want, fighting for what I believe in. But sometimes the power comes from letting go. And, you know, when we apply yeah. it to things like relationships like we're talking about now, and there'll be a lot of people that will be dealing with this, as I sort of am at the moment with, with certain sort of situations in my life where sometimes the best thing to do is nothing. So, you know, something's, yeah. you know, a relationship's ended or there, there's some sort of, 
problem going on. Like you say, sometimes worth fighting for when you find some common ground. But other times there's the acceptance of th th this is expired and I, and I can walk away and that's okay rather than feeling guilty about it. Yeah, and that's but, something I'm learning now. I think, I think it's because, as you say, we trained ourselves to be this, oh, we have to be fighting for something at all times, for something to have value or worthwhile. You need to be fighting for it. And, and it's, that's a kind of dangerous state of mind. And, and I think this lockdown and the virus has actually made us all reassess that and think, you know, the moments that we're, you know, touch wood, we don't go in lockdown again. But now we're back down to six people getting together at once. And it, and it does make you kind of evaluate for better or worse where things come in that priorities list. And, yes. and if you could only see, you know, two people or three people, who would they be? And I think we've had to train ourselves to not fight for the things that we can't, that we can't win, you know, and, and, you know, in life, life is, is short, you know, I'm, I'm definitely hitting my middle, <laughs> midlife crisis, <laughs> um, but, 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 you know, like life, life does, it's flying by and, and it's, yeah. it, it's not long enough to have to put yourself in really awkward situations if you don't have to, you know, I, I've, I've felt like in the lockdown, I've fallen back in love with the simplicity of playing music with my friends rather than like the, the machinations of the industry and, and perhaps having my ego stroked on stage, you know, mm. Like I've realized that actually what I cherish and need is to have a laugh with my two friends and make music. You know, like like this morning, we just, we've got a beautiful little puppy during lockdown, which I know a lot of people have. And, and my, my biggest highlight of the moment is, excuse me, I'm not, won't be rude, but when my dog does a number two, I'm running around. I'm going, like me and my wife are just having the time of our lives. That's bringing the, bringing the most joy to us at the moment. And we're laughing nonstop because we, we've never discussed oh, toilets so as much in our entire life. Yeah, but, you know, we're high-fiving. <laughs> we're high-fiving <laughs> when the dog does something like that. And, and actually, I, I'm, I'm loving it because sometimes, you know, you sit and you... There's days where I watch too much news and I think, how are we going to get out of this? And then other days I think it's those moments of joy that matter. And I think we're all still having this subconscious kind of kind of battle with ourselves that we know what makes sense, but there's a part of us that kind of is uncomfortable with being comfortable. Yeah, you know well, I mean. absolutely. And, and I mean, that gets exasperated for people in, in your position because, you know, you're... You, you live a high octane lifestyle normally, you know, you're traveling around the world, you could track, you know, three or four different countries in a week, you're gigging, there's crowds, you don't know where you are in the world half the time, it's really fast paced. And I guess there, there is no pause or um, even desire to stop and go, oh, wow, a simple moment, whatever that might be. So I think you know, for, for all of us, that's been a real pleasure. But I'm imagining for you, that's been quite an extreme version of that, sort of really extracting yourself from that crazy carousel and having simple moments like your dog doing a number two. <laughs> it, it is. I mean, this is the most amount of time I've slept in my bed in about 20 years. Wow. Like, you know, the, the most amount of time we normally sleep at home is maybe maybe a month maximum, you know. And, and so I've enjoyed that aspect. It's it's the strange thing for me was the creation, like to create an album and kind of have that momentum and the, the mental momentum of it and, and wanting to share it and then not being able to take that logical next step, which is, as you say, travel and play it and take it all around. That, that's, that's been tough to, to deal with because I feel a little bit purposeless at, at certain points, mm. you know, but again, I feel like I've got a chance to kind of learn about myself a little more and, and I don't, I feel like I don't lose value or identity by not being in tour. And, you know, initially yes. I thought, oh no, that's who I am. You know, if, I, if I'm not able to go and sing on stage, who am I? And, and does it devalue my worth in, in life and in, in this universe? Or, and actually it, it doesn't, you know, it's just a diff, it's just a different thing. We're just going through mm. a different moment of, mm. um, so I've, I've quite enjoyed the simplicity and, and honestly, kind of forgetting my ego a little bit, you know, see, I'm sure you're the same when you've been in real intense periods of work and traveling and, and things and, and everything revolves around what you do and you live in this bubble and you kind of get in a slightly inflated sense perhaps of, of self and, and what you're doing doing you know I don't, i'm not meaning you fair but yeah. one yeah. Yeah, we'll listen right listen now, here <laughs> <laughs> who do you think you are um, no i know you, you mean do. like small things feel very stressful but to anyone else they'd be like 
why are you worried about yeah why are you worried about you? on a book cover or something <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? and, it, and it does matter to, it is important but it's not yeah. that that level of importance that level of kind of mountain out of a molehill mm. and, and as i say that that's that's what i'm quite enjoying when i've been hanging out with with my family and things i've really savored being able to say i'll see you next week little things like that because i never normally get to do that you know and i'm not complaining i love I would, there's nothing i'd rather do than play music and take my songs around the world but see being able to see to my say to my nephews and my nieces oh I'll see you next friday we'll come oh, and hang out you know we'll go for a, a kick about and things and that that's it's those little things that i'm really savoring so whenever i, I get to um, unsettled with with the music side of things I just think of that and I have faith that as human beings we need to share music art we need to be together that's what we are we're social creatures and I know at some point when things are safer we will get in rooms together we will share these moments we'll talk about this era because it's not just going to be a time period it's going to be an yeah. era really and 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 but I think that we'll come out with this with a wonderment of the world. That's what I kind of hope. Maybe sounds a bit hippy dippy. I don't think at all. I think I think there will be, you know, there'll be some huge negatives and there'll be some brilliant positives. But like me and my mate were saying the other day, oh, I just really want to stand in a field with loads of people I don't know and just <laughs> dance. Like just people I've totally. never met before. I just really miss it, like so desperately. It's that connection, because that's my example I use. I don't even think about live music about me playing. I think about standing in a crowd when, you, when your eyes connect with someone you've never met before across a venue and you're both singing a lyric yeah. at the top of your voice. And there's that moment of pure electricity, pure magic. You might never see that person ever again, but you never forget that moment. You've just had this purest connection. And, mm. and it's funny you and your friend are saying that good, because I'm, mm. I'm still, I'm kind of hoping that there's no, that things don't, slip to people's subconscious about a, a fear of lots of people. I, know, I, th I think I that human need, the human need for connection and intimacy, I think, will override that. But I know that there's elements of fear at the moment. But Yeah, um, I hope so, because it is so important. And I think, um, you know, we sometimes the arts are, you know, devalued. Like obviously, we all know the, the, the vast importance of the NHS right now and all the people that are working so hard. But But we all do need escapism and and art to speak to us. And, you know, I'm such a huge music lover, as, as you know, and I, I can't mm -hmm. play an instrument. I'm not musical in the slightest, but for me, the joy purely comes from somebody often either playing an instrument or, or singing the words that relate to my story without them knowing anything about me. And that amazing alchemy of, that's what I feel, but I didn't know how to articulate it. Yes. And, and, and that must be, such a wonderful thing for you i'm sure there's a catharsis in in the writing process for you but also knowing that you're actually reaching out to people and and helping and creating solace and comfort that that must be a really lovely feeling yeah it, it does remind you of the power of music and, and music i love all art forms i love art i love movies i love literature there's something about music that is like so intimate. You know, it feels, see if you find a song that does say how you're feeling, like there's, there's nothing beats that, you know. You, you can sit by yourself, listen to a song and feel a part of something. And I don't think there's any other kind of art form that does that. When, when I find it, as I'm getting older and writing more songs, my 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 job is to is to turn off the fact that I know I'm going to be playing to lots of people or there's people going to be waiting for the songs because I think if you're too aware that that you're or certainly for me the way I create if I'm too aware that someone else is going to interpret what I'm singing it can make me then try and second guess my lyrics and yeah. things or, or maybe wonder how will this be taken and actually the truest form of art is kind of like how it comes out how you see it and how you hear it. And then, you know, kind of fingers crossed to a certain extent, people connect. But I, I do feel lucky, you know, I've, I've, we've written records about grief, I've written records about being married, I've re written records about, you know, friendships deteriorating and things. And, and I think that's why I feel very fortunate with the connection with our fans, because the people that come to our shows, they really, they feel the songs. And, and that's all I've ever wanted from my music, is someone to, you know, when you, when you, when I, make eye contact with someone in a crowd and they're singing and, and I can see that their heart's pumping with this mm. song and, and I think, God, this is 
it's a tune that I wrote. It still blows my mind, and it's what gives me the energy of a 19-year-old when, when I'm on tour and on a stage. I mean, we still jump around, wear shirts off for two hours, <laughs> which is patently ridiculous, but I'm never going <laughs> to stop doing that. You know, if, I, if as soon as I feel like I don't have that level of energy or that level of commitment and love and passion for what I do, will stop. But thankfully, people when people share our music and tell us their stories along with our music, it's it's glorious and it gives me life life yeah, force. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys always will because, you know, I think all of your fans have that understanding that you're not going to write songs that are going to, you know, skip over subjects or kind of skirt on the outside of the subject. You're going to go right to the nucleus and you're going to bare your soul and talk about things, like you said, like grief. And I know, you know, one of your albums was based around the grief of losing your mother. And, you know, you're, you're talking about really personal situations that I'm sure kind of been comfortable to write, but, but, but perhaps had that element of, of you processing it as you're making the album. Is that, is that how it happens? Yeah, I think, I think it's, I think like a lot of people that write songs and things, I find it easiest to communicate through, through my songs. I probably say more through my music than I, than I do to my friends and family perhaps sitting, you know, even though we spend lots of time together, yeah. they'll figure out more about me from the songs. And I think I think there's perhaps a defense mechanism in that, that I can present it as art and, and it, it can be hidden if need be. There, there's, there's been a couple of times where I've, I've felt a layer of, of guilt about singing about, you know, my mum passing away because ironically that album was like our first album that kind of got became quite successful for want of a better word and I really struggled with that because I felt like I, have I just now cashed in on a, on a feeling of, of sadness and kind of hollowness and, and and it took me a couple of years to realize no no that that's what makes me make art I don't want to sit get up in the morning and write a song just about my breakfast or something you know I know that sounds ridiculous but but it needs to be something that that I'm always going to care about that I'm always going to feel and, and have that kind of same attachment, different relationship with, with the emotions, but, but that same attachment and appreciating how important it was then and how important the development of the feelings is now. But, but it, it has been tough at points. I think now with a bit of distance from that record in particular, I feel, I feel more comfortable and I, and I, I now see this, this, I almost feel like I had a strength to write those songs, not to sound full of myself, but um, when I look back, I'm like, actually it was quite brave and it was risky. But thank goodness I did it because I, I would not have processed those feelings properly if I hadn't sung them, the songs over, you know, on tour and then maybe the odd interview about the album and things. I think if I hadn't been forced to address it in that way, I wouldn't have addressed it. You know, and I, th I think a lot of a lot of people in, in, are like that in general, you know, when, when especially with grief, because it, you go into shock and, and, and everyone around is kind of like, treating you with kid gloves at and want to make sure you're okay but everything goes into this weird kind of soft focus and and uh, and you're not really yourself for a while um as i'm sure you know lots of your listeners you know unfortunately it's just the human but human but condition is, but that's why it is so important that that you've channeled that into music because i think really important subjects that are hard to talk about should be presented in varying ways so you know in in book form in in talks in podcast film tv poetry and music because we need that sort of 360 approach to to dealing with things that are hard to talk about and, it, and it's interesting you say that that you have found that process easier than sitting and and talking to someone and, and i can absolutely understand it i mean i've sort of similarly done the same with with writing books which is you know quite prolific in what I'm saying and it is very much exactly as you know the story goes but mm. I would rather say to my mum here you go go read that yeah, read and then it. she's like oh god what the hell you know she has no <laughs> clue because I haven't told her you know that I had a panic attack or whatever because it's too oh, weird or awkward or I don't know it's just it's still you know I spend my life talking about mental health but I still have my own personal stumbling book blocks because it is it's a tricky thing, and I think these subjects being presented in different ways is is of paramount importance. And and I think also um, for men, you know, I, I, it it sounds like you're generalising, but we're kind of not because we've seen the statistics. We know that male suicide rates are you know increasing year on year, and they far outweigh female suicide rates. And 
Um, and men do find it perhaps more difficult to talk about emotions or, or things that are going on in their lives. And I, and I wonder how being in a group with two of your, your greatest mates, with Ben and James, have you had sort of an open dialogue? Have you had that, that sort of comfort to feel like you, you could talk if you wanted to? Um, to be honest, that's probably more of a recent thing. I think, sadly, it is generalising, but, but most, most young men don't want to talk about that kind of thing. They, they, they feel like it's a, that the vulnerability is a sign of weakness or something. I feel like the, the, the generation coming of age just now, I think, have a much healthier perspective and point of view in that. For, for my kind of generation, it just it just wasn't the done thing. And and um, I mean, one of, my, one of my really good friends is one of my favorite artists, a fellow called Scott Hutchison, who was a singer in a band called Fright and Rabbit. And he, he, he committed suicide a, a couple of years ago. And he was someone that from the outside expressed himself beautifully through his music. He's in a band with his brother. He, he was idolized by many, many people and a real source of inspiration. And, and, and he just couldn't, overcome his own battles you know and but from the outside it, it was looking like oh, he's processing this and and and, and sadly he's, he's succumbed to, to suicide and, and thought that was his, his best way out and and it's absolutely heartbreaking when you when you see someone that you you, you think has strength and, and everything and you, and it kind of men have dealt with it all wrong for a long time you know and and, and i think it's been swept under the carpet and i think just being able to say, hey, excuse my French here, but I feel shit. You know, I feel shit. I don't even to say, I don't even know why. I think that yeah. that's like, don't be afraid to say that you don't know why you don't feel right. You know, not everything comes with a reason. And I think, I think that's part of it is, oh, I, I don't feel it, but I don't know why everything's fine. So, so whatever, I'll just go on with it. And actually, you can neglect yourself in a really d dangerous way. But for myself and the boys in the band, in the last few years, since our, our friend Scott and everything is, we've been very aware that, look, you, you can't keep these things in. You know, it, it's nice to put an arm around someone and just say, hey, I hope you're all right. But actually see, express it, express it. You know, like if, if, if you are feeling like you're just going down, spiraling down, then then kind of put a hand up to, to help, to, for someone to help you, because otherwise people don't know. And, and everything's so, just in the, this year of everything being so visible with social media and everything, we all put on our best displays where we can. And, and, and we, we can never forget that as humans, we have that kind of uncertainty inside and that vulnerability and, um, and ego shouldn't get in the road. So, so yeah, it's something we've discovered recently. We've, we've had ups and downs and, and part of that's been our, our dynamic as a band has changed at points. You know, sometimes you're getting on like a house on fire. Other times you want to set their house on fire. <laughs> but, 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 you know, I think, but again, any worthwhile relationship has that ups and downs, but yeah. it's, it's as we were saying earlier, it's, if, it's, if there's something worth fighting for, if you feel that you can help each other out and, um, you know, if any of your listeners don't know, Ben and James, the other guys in my band are twins as well. So it's a really unique dynamic we have. We've, we've been friends from when we were like seven years old and been a band from when we were 13. So, I mean, this is our like our teenage childhood band. And, and it's that's when it's easy to kind of put your feelings to the side. You know, for 20 years, it's like, hey, we're on this great journey. No, nothing matters. We're bulletproof bouncing off. And then suddenly you're like, oh, or something happens in your life and you're just winded. So, um, so no, we, we've discovered a healthy way recently, sadly. I, I wish it, I could say it's been for longer, but um, for me, I, I had a bit of a turning point on tour a few years ago when it was 2013, actually. I had, I had a bit of a, for one of a better phrase, a bit of a kind of breakdown in tour that I just, when I, land, I landed in Toronto at the airport and I just couldn't, physically my body couldn't take me through the, through the airport. And then I get like putting a gurney and everything in it. And just, and it was one of those where I'd been neglecting myself for so long and been on the treadmill for like, at that point, probably 10 years without coming up for a year. And after that moment, I, I discovered meditation. I tried medication for a bit, which, which I don't think anyone should be afraid of. You know, is if, if you need to take some medication to help you get yourself balanced, I think that's absolutely fine. You know, I cut, cut down on my drinking and everything, realized that that wasn't a way through. And so, so you do have these, looking back on what we've been doing, I see these moments, these key moments, and we've been lucky that we kind of made the right choices at the right times. Sometimes in those moments, you know, those forks in the road, you can 
if you make the wrong choice, it's really hard to go back. But I feel that every time we've hit those huge stumbling blocks or we've needed each other or we've needed to reassess our lifestyle, we've done that. And I think that's the friendship has helped us do that. But as we've gotten older, we've, we've, it's become much healthier and we're, we're more aware of it in advance now rather than waiting for the drama to happen. Yes. And go, what do we do? That's just from experience, isn't it? Because I think, like you say, you know, you have these stumbling blocks and you, and you, and you make good choices or bad and then you learn it and, and you try again. And it's so good that, that you do all talk now. And I think, you know, we need to have that discussion on a, you know, really focusing on, on men, because I know even looking at my podcast, there'll be a breakdown of more women listening than men. And, and it still seems like these sorts of conversations to men feel like, Oh, it's not for me, but it's, it's fundamentally about being human living life not feeling ashamed about anything you know you touched on something so important there talking about you know your steps out of having that that breakdown or that that big um patch for you there because you know I've had exactly the same I had, I had a huge depressive sort of year and I again I went on medication to just get my head above the ground to sort of start off and yeah. then and then you know I've sort of made lots of positive life changes that feel right now but I think it doesn't matter what route you take it's as long as you know that you're making any sort of change or trying something to that's just exactly change it. your your point of focus I guess really that that's exactly it to feel I mean earlier we're talking about relinquishing control in certain aspects but seeing in that instance it, it feels nice to feel that no no I'm, I'm going to try and kind of help myself through this do you would you say you rely more like in your fam family or your friends? You know, who's your kind of sounding board yeah, if you if you're I guess sometimes um, it's tough to say to your parents, you know, because you just yes. sometimes you think, Oh, oh I don't want to Yeah. <laughs> Not my mum, God bless. I love my mum, but it's she will get get way too stressed. So I think, you know, I I like you really very much rely on practical things like meditating and doing yoga, but also I'm really lucky in the fact that my husband's um, you know, he's recovering uh, drug and alcohol addict and he's been sober for eight years so we can have really great chats about all the sorts of weird sort of thought processes and and things that we'll be going through and I'm I feel really grateful for that relationship and I don't think you necessarily need lots of those soundboards I think it is just knowing you've got some really trustworthy ones I, it's I'm, knowing I'm they're really, there it's knowing they're yes, there you're absolutely it, it right is. I'm, I'm really interested to know what what's um what does your meditation practice look like you know how much has that changed your life and 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 how do you implement it into your your day well it's it's transcendental meditation i do which is it's two sets of 20 meditations for 20 minutes so like a 20 minute meditation in the morning and, and you're given a i did a, a course on it and everything and you're given your mantra and you're you know it's 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 actually a beautiful few day course mm. I, 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 I was, it was one of those things where I was a little bit like, oh, yeah, I'll go and try it. I don't think this is for me. And as soon as I was in there, I was like, no, this feels right. I need this. And mm. Again, so I would, I would say any any men listening or anyone listening, but men in particular who sometimes are resistant to these kind of things, give it a try. You, you know, you'll be amazed at how you feel and how it clears your brain. But so, yeah, so once in the evening, once in the morning, 20-minute mantra. And it's the way it was described to me that helped was it just retrains your brain. So sometimes when you're in those moments, you go straight to the reaction. You know, like you go straight from something happens and react. And actually you miss this whole kind of middle part of your brain. I'm sure that's medically the part of your brain. <laughs> but it's but you know, like it's, with science. Yeah, it's a science right? there, that part right there. But you know, like you're not processing the thought and not actually putting it in perspective or in context. And that's where that's, I, I became just a tighter and tighter coiled spring. And that was when, as I say, I reached the moment where I had a, a proper do and 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 the, doing the meditation, it just really unraveled me. I just felt like it, in a, in a good way. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, that's perhaps yeah, yeah. an unfortunate, but it unwound me. And and I also read a lot of sto about stoicism, which is I don't know if you've if you've read much or you've dipped your toes. It's there's um it's a book particularly I've got called the Daily Stoic, and it's okay. it's all it's these old meditations from from back in the day. It's like philosophers like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius, who, I'm th who I thought was just a character in the Glad Gladiator movie. <laughs> turns out, <laughs> turns out, turns out he was an actual fella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's beautiful. See the, see the way that they discuss yourself in the world and how, you know, really one of the only things we have control is what's going on in here. And if we can train ourselves to not be 
as affected by the outward influences and inspirations and, and pressures, then, then everything becomes easier to deal with. And, and actually reading the Stoicism with my TM, it, 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 I felt like I was breathing differently. I honestly felt, I felt like my, my head was going from kind of like walking around like that to, you know, like, wow. like that. And, and, and the Stoicism is what I go back to. I still meditate every day. I don't read the Stoicism every day unless I feel like I'm kind of perhaps going down and I need just a little recontextualization of, of who I am and where I am in yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah. Again, I've said, I hope this, I hope I'm not coming across sounding self-obsessed. <laughs> no, we're you know, about, I'm here to interview you. That's um, what it's meant to be. Absolutely. Um, um, but I honestly recommend it. It's there's like a little note, a little quote for every day, and it explains it through. And it's it's wonderful. It's a wonderful book, and it's really helped me. I've been reading it now for about five years. There's there's only it's just a daily thing, you know, 365 quotations. But it's a really wonderful thing, and it, and it just. Whenever I feel like things are becoming a bit too oppressive or on my shoulders, I read that and it just reminds me, you know what, things have been happening for millions of years. What I think is the most important and worrying thing right now, if I zoom out and I see it in context, even just in the small town I live in, never mind zooming out to the country, zooming out to mm. the world, it doesn't effing matter. Yes. It's not important. Oh, you God, know. I know. So, so, and, and has this in any way impacted your creativity in a good way or bad and, and I say that because I find this quite fascinating specifically about I guess musicians poets writers that often well and I've interviewed obviously lots of people in in the world of the arts sometimes their their what they deem their greatest work comes from a real place of pain and I wonder if through your own healing you've had moments of going oh god can I access those parts of me, if I'm feeling okay? Yes, I, ha I have worried. I mean, especially my band, we, we play obviously quite intense music at points. Sometimes we make pop music, but sometimes I'm screaming. And there, there, there's, been, there's been times where I have thought, am I, am I losing that anger? And actually it's, it's finding a different type of anger. Right. It, it's, it's not, you know, there's, there's sometimes the anger can be pure visceral and it can be pure catharsis. But then even the act of, of then recording that song 18 months later, it becomes something different. So for me, I, I, in those moments of creation, I do like to feel fragile and vulnerable, which, which I find tougher when I want to become stronger in my mind, of mind and of heart and body. I do find that tough, but I, I, I feel again fortunate that we've been a band for a long time, so I can wait for those moments where I yeah. feel like, no, no, this, this is I'm down in that moment, and, I'm, and this is pure heartfelt. It's dark, but I know I can come back to the light. Whereas I felt like that was all I had for a while. Yeah. You know, I felt like I was writing so many songs so quickly in quick succession, going on tour, coming straight home, straight back into it. You know, and. Um, and felt there was no break. Now I feel like it's okay to not feel like writing a song for a month or two. You know, I now don't feel the guilt of, of that. It's like, well, I'll know when it's time. And I, I'm not the kind of person that uh, most creative people do write from the more negative feelings and the darkness. You know, it's, it's kind of, for some reason, it was, it's what's most inspiring to us yeah, humans. You know, joy, really. joy doesn't necessarily make you want to create in the same yeah. way. And, um, so, so yeah, it, it's something I, I worry about but I'm not panicking about because I know I've probably still got enough things unsettled inside me that I know they'll still rear their head and I'm, and I'm ready. I've got my antenna up for when yeah. that happens. <laughs> but it's just <laughs> but, interesting. But yeah. I think it will be just so, you know, fascinating to, to see where you guys go as a band next, knowing that, you know, you're, you're all in a different place personally, perhaps, and also as a band with, with how you speak to each other and, and, and how that open dialogue continues and, and how yeah. you observe simply human emotion i think it, it's going to be fascinating to see where you guys go next and and i'll, I'll certain, certainly be waiting for whatever that turns into oh, thank you so much fair thank you yes you know what we're in such a weird time but i think we just we have to kind of embrace this chaos as much as we can and try and find the silver linings on the, on the cloud because you know what it, it's it's we're going through a traumatic experience at the moment we all are in different ways but it is, it's, it's an existential thing we're dealing with. But you know what, there's, there's ways through this. We're a strong, we're adaptable species. As we said just before we started, how many new skills have we all discovered and learned 
since the lockdown began and we've, we've been adaptable and, and we're good at it. And you know, oh, mate, we just I need can to... make literally anything out of a cardboard box for my kids now. Number one skill. <laughs> I can make a pirate ship, a pirate hat, a sword. I've done it all. I've sussed it all. Mate, off. I think I, I want to come and play at your house. Yeah, great. Right. We've got it all going on here. Um, Simon, thank you so much. What an absolute joy. Um, I've been so looking forward to recording this episode, and it's just lovely to catch up with you and stay safe and keep creating and, and making your your beautiful music and um and we'll catch up soon thanks so much fair and such a pleasure to talk to you as always <laughs>